What's up everybody, this is Reverend Guns, and today we are going to be taking apart and cleaning a Walther CCP. Now this was the first generation they had where it requires a key to take off the slide. Um, so if you're looking for an M2, the M2 is just a switch on the back. But before we begin, let's always do a safety check, and we will press this little button right here. And when you do, it'll cause the magazine to pop out. You don't want this anywhere near your solvents. So we're going to set this far away from us for now. And then we also want to lock back the slide. Okay. And we are going to look down into the chamber there and make sure nothing is in there. So now that we know that it's clear, we can get started cleaning. So let's uh, uncock the slide here. And uh, this doesn't have a decocker on it, so you'll need to pull the trigger because you cannot take off the slide if it has been cocked. So we're gonna take the key. And as you see here, there's a little, little tip on the end of it. And that little tip is going to go right below that silver piece you see sitting there. Okay? Just like that. And then you will push it in. It only lets you go so far. But once it's in, you just pull back just a hair and it will allow you to pop it up. Okay, so we've got the slide, we've got the spring, and the barrel is a fix, so it will stay there on it while we clean it. Now one other thing I do is right here on the inside the slide, this is one of the few times you see the... Uh, spring and uh, striker pin exposed. So I actually take this out so I can clean the striker and uh, and make sure it's clean because it's it, it gets dirty in there as well. So to do that you want to take your key again and instead of putting it in the same way you took the slide off the frame you're gonna turn it upside down and put it in upside down. It's only going to let you go in so far. Let's see if I can get a good shot here. It's only going to let you go in so far, but if you twist, it'll all of a sudden snap in further. And that'll allow you to remove the lock the striker spring and give you full access to this, uh, the striker pin there. Okay. Now what I'll do to start is spray everything down. <laughs> we want to make sure everything gets a nice good coat. Same thing with the frame. Got everything good there. All right, so while that's soaking, I'll explain what I got going on here. I've got 
soft bristle brush. This also has a small end for detailing in the small crevices. I've got a harder bristle brush, which I use to get stubborn carbon off. I do not use the brass or the metal brushes. Um, I don't want to take the chance on scratching the frame, the slide. I don't want it to, to mar it up or, or make it look ugly because I was scrubbing too hard. So bristle brushes are, are more than enough. I've got a nine millimeter barrel brush. I've got a slotted cleaning rod, which we'll use to finish cleaning off the barrel. Um, I've got a screwdriver sitting here. I don't need it for this one. I've got some gun oil. I've got a gun oil rag. That way it's not contaminated with anything else. I've got some patches to finish cleaning off the barrel and uh, Q-tips sometimes come in handy. I don't think I'll be using it for this one. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the frame because the barrel I'm particular about. I always go in from the rear. And the reason why I do is because if I go in through the front end, there's a chance of banging, clanking, chipping, denting, dinging. You, you don't want to do any of that. So I intentionally go in from behind. Um, we're probably going to need a longer rod. There we go. So I go in from behind and push it through. Give it a nice thorough scrub. <laughs> Make sure we break apart any of the carbon or anything else that could possibly be in there. Right. Now we will go through and scrub everything else off on here. Make sure you get anywhere you can. I don't have any particular preference on gun cleaner. Everybody has their own opinion. Uh, I just recently tried what I'm using now and it seems to work really well. So I'm going to keep using it. everywhere you possibly can can't go wrong getting when you're cleaning it
All right. Now we're going to finish off the barrel. And uh, use some cleaning patches to get whatever residue is left in there. I do two at a time. It fills up the barrel a little more and gives it a nice good wipe down on the inside. And pull that through like that. And again, from the back, we want to go forward because I don't want to risk going in the other end and, and damaging the barrel. So let's give this a good few swipes here. see that it's quite dirty so we're removing all that crud out of there let's do that again make sure this don't come loose on me all right so two more one two we'll slide through the slot Feed it back through. See how it looks this time. Still a bit dirty. So we're going to do one more time. See if that'll be enough. Grab two more. Pull it through. So this will never get perfectly clean, but it'll turn into a light gray. Now I'm still seeing a little bit of black on here. So I'm going to do that one more time, just for good measure. Not going to hurt nothing. I would rather make sure it's clean than leave anything that could still be in there. So one more time. I think I grabbed three that time. A little firmer to get in and out. But no more black. So I think we're done. <laughs> Make sure a couple more areas here. All 
right. Let's give this a wipe down. See how we did. Frame and barrel look good. Oh yeah, real good. All right, let's move on to the, uh, let's get these springs done real quick. Those are pretty easy. Nice little wipe down going, get the ends. Carbon build up can cause problems, so we want to make sure we get everything thoroughly. Sure, look good. Now we'll work on the slide. <coughs> As you see, the uh, firing pin slides back and forth a little bit. I'm going to keep it all the way forward for the moment so I can get in there and really scrub it down. Because it's exposed, it will build up carbon in there. All right. If you want to uh, push the uh, the striker back further. There's a little silver button right here. You'll push in and then slide it back. It just kind of rolls back. And that'll let you get the, the front of the pin and inside more towards the front. Striker plate. Make sure we get that real good. And he 
where you can get. You're not gonna hurt it. guide rod right there make sure that's nice and clean right, let's get around the sights the extractor Give this a wipe down. Let's see how we did. Wipe off all the residue. Anything you can get. to uh, push the striker forward again just tilt it forward and press the button it'll just kind of flow forward you know what this would be best to use a q-tip for You see, that's what I'm talking about. It's quite dirty, so this is something you want to clean. Well, let's do one more. That's looking better. <coughs> now I'm going to use a Q-tip to kind of get down in these little areas real good. Make sure I've completely wiped off everything. Alright, 
So, time for some lube. Get your gun oil here. Get your gun oil cloth. Uh, yeah, I know I'm pretty liberal with this, but I like to make sure it's lubricated well. So I'll start with the frame. I'm pretty much going to do the barrel. Uh, I might do the feed ramp. I'm going to do the top and sides of the block here. Let's see here, what else? That's pretty much it for the frame. All right, this is your guide rod. I will lube that. Definitely want lube on that. Anywhere else you can see little burrs it runs down the, the top of this slide here and it runs down the center I don't want to put any oil on the uh, striker pin itself because oil gathers dust dirt crud whatever else and we don't need that to fail because it got jammed. Um, you can leave the spring if you want. Not necessary because we just, this one goes around the barrel. Uh, and this one I also don't want to lube either because it's right behind the, the striker pin there. All right, so putting it back together isn't very tricky. So you pull up the little spring here one side's got a little black end, the other one's open. You want the black end to the back. And if you look down in there, you'll see that the, the firing pin itself has a hole in it that goes so far. So you want the spring to seat in that hole and push in like so. It's going to stick out just a little bit. Okay? There we go. Now I'm going to take the, the slide lock here and I'm going to put it in at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so the, right now it's uh, the silver piece is pointing at 3 o'clock. I'm going to take my key again. You need the key. And just like you unlocked it to take the slide off, you're going to put it in in the same fashion onto the slide lock here and you're going to push it in. You can only push it in so far but at this point you can keep pressure and turn it and then all of a sudden your key is going to push in just a hair more and now it is set back into position. All right now that we got the slide put back together Take the, the guide spring here, a recoil spring, and uh, it really doesn't matter which way this goes on. The, the, they're the same size either way, okay? And as you're putting it, the, the slide on, the, the spring will sit right at the end of the barrel. If it doesn't look lined up, that's okay because the barrel is going to line it up for you. That's not going to be an issue for it whatsoever. What you will be concentrated on is if you look down below the barrel there, there is a hole for your guide rod to go. Take that spring off. There's a hole down there for your guide rod to slide into. So my best advice is to hold it so it's pointing straight up Put the guide, the recoil spring in its correct spot, which, like I said, as long as you've got it there at the edge, it, your, the barrel will line it up the rest of the way. And now the guide rod just kind of dangles, so with it being in the upward position, you can kind of dangle it into the hole. 
I've got it in the hole. And you're basically lining everything up to snap into place. Okay? Now the slide is not completely on yet. So what you want to do is squeeze it, put the key in with the notch under the little silver tab again, and as soon as you do, it just pops into place. And now you've got See that? So if anybody says you need something other than your key to do what I just did, they're either A, lazy or can't do it. So just remember, when you go to take it off, the knot little tip is on top and goes right under the silver piece. Let's see if I can do this close. Those notch on top. See it? Little tip. You just push it in and just slowly take it off. Okay. Put it back on. You'll want it pointing upward. Put the spring in the barrel slot. Line up the guide rod into that hole below the barrel. There you go. <clears throat> and kind of hold everything together. It, it stays there pretty well by itself. And then putting the key back in the way you unlocked it allows you to snap the slide back into place. Okay? So, it's not as difficult as a lot of people may think it is or as it seems, but it, once you've done it a few times, you, you should easily master it. So, only thing left to do is uh, give it a final wipe down. Oh, I'm gonna use the other one. This one's clean. real good there there we go so we have just successfully taken apart with the key a Waller CCP thanks for watching I also offer the online course to get your Texas license to carry a handgun. It's the four hour class broken down into segments and saves your progress so you can do it at your own pace. After completing the course, you will be able to print your certificate. Then it'll help you locate an instructor close to you, no matter where you are in Texas, so you can complete the shooting portion of the course. This is all certified by the Texas Department of Public Safety. Check it out at reverendguns.com. If you have any questions or comments, please add them below. Be sure to like and subscribe for more firearms education.